right, now that my background is dry, let's talk about finishing off these trees. I'm gonna use my round brush. It's a little bit of a smallish medium um, round brush, and I'm gonna use that with my pink and my white paint. So I'm actually gonna take a little bit of pink, roll it off, a little bit of white pulling from the side to make sure it doesn't get too dirty it off and I just want to have those two colors next to each other. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take both of those colors on my brush and I am just going to start tapping on my leaves. As I'm doing this, there's two ways you can think about it. You can either imagine your trees where only the leaves are on the branches or you can imagine it being a very full tree. You can fill it in. I prefer having mine very full. So what I'm doing right now is I've got that pink and that white mix, but we're not gonna keep it just those two colors. As we start to lay in some of our background colors of the light pink white mix, and all I'm doing is tapping it, it's kind of like a stamp, I'm going to start to add in some darker pink, some lighter pink, even some white, because I don't want my tree to be all in color. If you look at this one, there's white, there's straight pink, and there's a lot of mixed colors. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna keep adding these in here, filling it up as much as I want to. I'm going to add just some plain white in there now just to kind of brighten up some of those areas. The great thing about these round brushes are they work fantastic as stamps. You get very similar unified flowers on your tree where it still looks nice and neat. I don't know if you guys can hear in the background my children are upstairs doing dishes. So if you hear some clinking and clanking around, my kids are upstairs knocking out their chores for the days. Um, I've got a 11 year old son, Tristan, and a nine year old daughter, Bella. They're in fifth and third grade. And they are very excited about the kids class on Saturday because they're gonna be painting with me. So you guys will get to see them on Saturday. Now, Saturday's a paint in your pajamas kind of morning. I'll have my coffee, I'll be in my pajamas, and we can go ahead and paint in our pajamas. My afternoon classes are definitely geared more towards adults. Of course, anybody can paint these pictures. I make it pretty easy. Um, I like to teach them step by step so that everybody feels successful. And my morning classes, my 10 a.m. classes, are definitely gonna be some easier ones. So if you still wanna learn a little bit of color theory and art history maybe, tune into those. If you end up doing all of my classes and you run out of painting supplies, you can always cover your canvases with white paint and paint over them. Nothing wrong with reusing. So as I have my foreground trees finished, I'm gonna take a lot of white. I'm gonna keep my brush kind of messy with my pink and I'm just gonna mix that in. So I've got a really, really, really light pink color. And the reason I'm doing that is because in the background on these trees back here, I'm gonna barely tap my brush on here, but I want it to look like those trees in the background also have a little bit of color on them. So right back here, I'm just adding very gentle spots of color for my background. And I think my trees are done. Now let's talk about those lily pads. You can choose to leave your lily pads how they are, or you can add some flowers on them. 
Lily pad flowers can be yellow, pink, red, white, purple. I mean, it's your picture. It's totally up to you. I'm going to stick with some yellow. So with my paintbrush, if you guys remember, we did this before where I took some paint on there and I really kind of pulled that paint out to make it a nice point on my brush. I want to keep that nice point. And I'm going to very gently start on one spot of my lily pad and I'm going to pull it straight up and straight out. So look, total chicken foot. I love little chicken feet. We used to have chickens. So I've got a little chicken foot. It's a great way to start a lily flower. And then I'm gonna start from that base and I'm just gonna pull out. I'm gonna add a little bit of white in there. Look how pretty those are. I'm gonna do another one with some pink. So I'm gonna start right here and I'm gonna make my little chicken foot. And from that little chicken foot, I'm just gonna make straight lines that go out. I'm gonna add a little bit of white in there too. I love mixing colors. I mean, why use just pink when you can have dark pink, white pink? Look at that. Now, not all of your lily pads might be flowering at the same time. So you can, you know, put one over here and one over there. They don't all have to be flowering at the same time. And I think this picture is about finished. The last thing you need to do, you're never going to become famous if you don't sign your artwork. So find a color that's going to stand out. Pick a spot. I always sign in the bottom right corner. Wash your brush and tune in next time. Thank you so much for being a part of my very first painting for a purpose. While we're all quarantined inside, trying to keep people healthy and safe, we can at least learn a little bit and have a little bit of fun. Have a great afternoon, friends.